congratulations on getting up and running with Kali Linux. Uh, so this video is going to provide a brief kind of overview introduction to Kali Linux. I'm going to show you a couple things you need to know how to do with this operating system in this class. And so my version is going to look a little bit different than yours. You know, don't don't worry about it. Um, the functionality is still the same. Everything will work the same. There'll just be some cosmetic differences because I'm running it in a, uh, a slightly different format. But uh, but don't don't worry about it. It's the same functionality. So um, the first thing you need to know is that, you know, at times during this course, you may get logged out of Kali Linux. You may walk away from your computer, um, you know, do something else for a little bit, come back and you find yourself facing a login screen. And so um, your, your default user for Kali Linux is Kali. So K-A, uh, you know, K-A-L-I. And your password is again, Kali. So Kali is the username, Kali is the password for the default user. Um, we, You can create other users. Um, there's no need to in this class. The default user is fine. You don't need to change your password for this class. So, you know, keeping the username Kali and the password Kali is perfect and really easy to remember. So when you log into Kali, you're going to see something that looks sort of like this, this, uh, you know, lovely little dragon in here, um, you know, this desktop. And I think the number one thing to remember is that this is an operating system, a desktop operating system, just like any other desktop operating system you use. So, you know, if you're using Mac OS, if you're using Windows, I mean, this is kind of the same thing. It looks different. Some of the functionality is different. You know, some of the ways you interact with your computer are different. But at the end of the day, this is an operating system. And so it, it's nothing to be scared of. It's nothing to be intimidated by. It really is just another look and feel for how to do a computer operating system. So um, the first thing we need to check now that you're logged into Kali Linux is your mouse. So, you know, you can use your, you know, keyboard touchpad you know, a wireless mouse might work too. Um, but the point is, is to make sure that your computer recognizes your mouse input. I, you know, if it doesn't, you know, you may have to go out and buy a cheap, um, you know, USB mouse. Uh, those almost always work just fine. If we can't get anything to work, you know, we can, we'll figure something out for you. But, you know, go ahead and make sure that uh, that your mouse works, that you can move around, that you can click stuff, you know, maybe even that you can, you can right click. Um, you know, that's all, you know, really useful. And if you can't, definitely let me know and we're, we'll figure out a solution. Um, the other thing to make sure that works is, is your keyboard. It's the same, same deal with the keyboard. Um, you know, some wireless keyboards work. Um, some, uh, you know, some, sometimes the keyboard for the, you know, like on a laptop doesn't work. Um, so just go make sure that your keyboard works. And the easiest way to do this is to go up here. You'll have this little uh, Kali Dragon up in the left-hand corner. We're going to be clicking on this a lot. So with your mouse that you now know that works, let's click on that. And this pops up, you know, the applications that you have access to in, in Kali Linux. And you'll notice over here that there is a text editor. So open up this text editor and just, you know, make sure your keyboard works. Um, and I uh, also want you to go ahead and save this file just because it's useful practice. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, save as again just this is just like you would on any computer um, I think it's really easy for this class to work on the desktop so you know your home folder like when we run um, commands and we do scans and stuff that's probably going to appear in this this home folder here but it's you know when we're creating files it's just easy to put them on the desktop so I'm going to name this file demo and save it and you can see it's right on my desktop just again this is exactly like how it would be on any operating system that, that you would use um, that you're used to so we can close that out um, now that uh, you know we know our mouse works and our keyboard works we found the text editor now i need to show you how to get online and so um, again mine's going to look a little different because i'm plugged in but up here you're going to see this little thing that looks like a computer screen before you get online it's probably going to be a blank outline with a little x in the corner but it's right up here next to the next to the time Click that, and um, you know your and your network. What's most likely going to happen is your wire available wireless networks are going to pop up. You know, go ahead and connect to a wireless network that you use. If you want to plug in, go for it. Just you know, grab the Ethernet uh, cable, um, plug it into your laptop or your your um, desktop, and uh, it it should fire up right away. Sometimes wireless cards don't work. It's particularly common with Macs. So if you're using like a Mac, say, I don't know, 2016, 2017, your wireless card might not work right. Um, uh, so go ahead and try to plug in if you can, plug in direct. 
um, with an Ethernet cable, that almost always works. And if you're still having issues, we can we can work something out and uh, we can figure out how to get you the right drivers um, to make your wireless connection work. But you know, for most students, it's going to be really easy. Just come up here, click this little little thing that looks like your computers. Again, you're just going to have a little X in the corner because you're not online right now, and get on your wireless network. Now, one thing to note: so we're op in this class, we're using Kali Linux on a USB. Um, you, we haven't taught your USB to be persistent yet, meaning it's not going to remember what you type in. So in the next lab, we're going to we're going to fix that, right? So, but for this time, when you get on that wireless network, when you turn off your computer, it's going to forget your wireless password. It's going to forget your wireless network. It's not going to remember any of that stuff. So you won't automatically get back uh, back online when you sign back in. So just be ready for that. When um, when we go through the exercise of getting you set up for persistence, that will fix that. And so we'll have. Of, it'll remember your wireless network, it'll remember your password after we complete the next lab. So um, the other thing to think about, once you're on the internet, I want you to go back to the little Kali Dragon in the upper left-hand corner, click it, and you'll see the web browser. On uh, some version of Kali Linux, this will look like a compass, kind of like Safari, um, but uh, you know, yours probably looks similar to this. Uh, go ahead and click that web browser, and you will see this is essential. This is Firefox, right? It's Firefox for Linux. Um, it uh, works the same as any other browser you ever used in your life. So I want you to go ahead and uh, go to um, what is that? Engage365.csuohio.edu. So go to go log into your email. Make sure you can you know log into your email. Again, this works just like any other browser, but it's you know for these labs, it's just going to make your life a lot easier if you have access to your. Cleveland State University email. Another thing, uh, you know, go ahead and make sure you can log into your, um, uh, you know, the Instructure CSU Law Online, um, you know, uh, learning program where we store our courses. That's also really useful. So, you know, go ahead and make sure you can log into that too. Uh, those are the only two online resources you're really going to need for this class. But again, it works just like any other browser browser you've ever used. Um, and just remember, again, because we haven't taught your USB to be persistent, persistent yet, when you shut down um, uh, your USB after the end of this lab, you're not going to have access. You know, you're just going to forget all your sign-ins. Again, that'll be fixed when we we get persistence configured. All right, so uh, we've got internet figured out. We've got I've shown you how to do email. Um, so the next thing and kind of the last big one is you need to know where terminal is because we're going to be doing a lot of work in command line in these labs. Um, so there's a couple of different ways to get here. You know, you can click on uh, the Kali Dragon and you can, you know, get terminal in here. Um, I always just come up here to the top bar here and click uh, terminal. You also see that you actually have your web browser right here too. You don't need to go to the Kali Dragon for that. Um, and so when you click this little black window, up pops a terminal window. And you'll see, again, Kali Kali. So this is a, a normal user. This is the normal user account. Um, the normal user has some privileges to do stuff um, with Linux, but it doesn't, you don't have all the privileges you need to execute all the labs in the class as just the normal Kali user. So we actually need to escalate your privileges. And so there's a couple different ways to do this. I think the easiest for the purposes of this class is to just type in sudo bash and you'll see it'll ask you for a password. And so you type in Kali and you'll notice this is one of the things that trips students up. Um, you know, unlike say on Windows or Macs, it, Mac, it won't give you any indication that you're typing in a password, right? It'll just, cursor will just sit there, but I swear I did just type in the password Kali. I hit return and you'll see I am now in the root account. And so the root account is, you know, a really powerful privileged account on a computer. Um, you know, if I told my computer to self-destruct right now, it would because I was in root. It wouldn't do that if I was just as the normal user. So you have to be careful in root uh, at Kali. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you're working off a USB. If you nuke your USB, it's really not the end of the day. You know, into the world, we can spin you up another one. Um, that's one of the nice things about you know working with Kali Linux on a on a live USB. But uh, you can see now we are in an elevated account. And so, um, if you're a lot of our labs, not all of them, but a lot of our labs are going to require you to be in, with this elevated privilege set as root. Um, if you ever want to get out of root, you can just type exit and you'll go back to your normal Kali Kali user. So, all right. Um, now, I think the last thing I need to show you for the, oh no, there's one more thing. So we're going to be doing a lot of uh, command line work. And in some of those commands, you're going to have to add a file to a command path. And so, um, you know, if you go, let's go over to our demo file, you know, we could always pull up the properties. 
and you can see you know where this file lives and so this file lives in slash home slash cali slash desktop with a d capitalization matters in linux if you wrote desktop with the lowercase d your computer would you know not know what you're talking about so um but you'll see slash home slash cali slash desktop slash demo would be this file and so if a lab call you know required you to call out to a specific file um you would type slash home slash cali slash desktop slash demo uh the easier way to do that is to drag and drop the file just like you know, again just like you might drag and drop a file in any operating system just drag this file over to the terminal window drop it in there and you can see it automatically populates that slash home slash cali slash desktop slash demo um, that's a little bit easier than trying to remember a file path um, and you're going to be doing that a lot and so when you're going through the lab instructions you'll oftentimes see an instruction to drag and drop a file um, i am don't retype out drag and drop a file in the command when you see that in a command like physically go out and drag and drop a file to um the terminal window and you can see it'll populate out that uh that fi entire file path um and this works anywhere i mean any any file you drag from any part of your system will will populate like this again i just think it's a lot easier just to throw stuff on your desktop it makes it it makes it a lot cleaner you can see what you're working with um and if you're ever having trouble you can show me a copy of your desktop and i can see whether or not the right file is there or not so that's just uh, you know an easy way to do that and so um with that the last thing i need to show you is how to turn this thing off so uh, there's a couple ways to do this um you can do this you know graphically you can come over here and you can say shut down or restart um, since you have a USB uh, sh restarting should just reboot your computer and then allow your computer to boot into your you know normal operating system that you use and bypass the USB or you can just shut down your entire computer you can do it that way so to get to that it's this little like you know circle with an arrow off in the very far right corner um, you can also do this from terminal so um, the uh in most uh deployments it does require elevated privileges so you can either type in sudo reboot or you can type in sudo power off and that'll shut off your computer or you know you can elevate your privileges that way and then you know type power off or reboot um either one will uh you know cause your either obviously your computer restart or or power off um, and that for now is it. Um, and again, feel free to click around. Um, don't, you know, there's a lot of tools on here. And so, you know, we're going to be really careful about where we aim tools, but, um, you know, provided you're not, you know, aiming tools at anything you're not allowed to aim at, um, you know, you can't, you can't get in trouble. You can't break anything. Go ahead and feel free to poke around and see what's here. Uh, you know, if your display looks kind of funky, you know, there is a settings option. You can go play with all this stuff. I mean, we've had students who want international keyboards. Great that you can find that here. Um, we've had students again who you're using multiple displays, you know, go ahead and fiddle with it here. You know, you really can't break anything. I mean, if you do break something, we can always blow your USB up and, uh, and rebuild it um, pretty quickly. You'll be surprised at how fast that process goes now that you've, you've been through it once before. And so with that, have some fun and, um, you know, go ahead. And for this week, the only assignment is to complete the Kali Linux quiz, which again, isn't really a quiz. It's just some yes or no answers about whether or not you're able to, you know, use your mouse, use your keyboard, get online just to make sure that you have everything in place for the next uh, set of laps. So, so have fun and uh, please do not hesitate to text me or email me with any questions you might have. This tutorial was prepared by the Center for Cybersecurity and Privacy Protection at Cleveland Marshall College of Law, Cleveland State University.